Victoria, have you ever heard of the Canadian Council of the Blind's Toronto Visionaries? I have. It's an organization that helps individuals living with vision loss get together with peers to share information, interests, learning, and recreational activities. Among other things, but okay, okay, you are very informed. But did you hear about their most recent adventure? Oh, I don't know. Which one is that? Well, just over 50 members of the group headed down to the Stratford Festival to take in an audio-described performance of HMS Pinafore. I was lucky enough to tag along and learn about the performance and other accessibility initiatives the festival has instituted. Well, sounds like a lot of fun. Let's roll it. The day started early in the morning in the parking lot of the CNIB in Toronto. Members of the Canadian Council of the Blind or CCB Toronto Visionaries gathered to start their journey to the Stratford Festival for the audio-described performance of HMS Pinafore. As they were boarding the bus, I pulled Yong Wong aside to find out why she wanted to make the trip. I've never been to Stratford. I, I have always, you know, wanted to go. So this is a great uh, chance for me to go there and you know, watch theatre. Like Young, Iona Jurassim was excited to take in the show and was grateful the festival is doing their part to make the arts accessible. Well, because we have to use our other senses, um, we should, you know, be at, on the same playing field as everybody else, sighted or otherwise, to have the opportunity to experience what everybody else is. With the bus loaded, they departed the CNIB for Stratford. When they arrived, the group jumped right into the touch tour, which was the perfect chance to talk to Ian White, one of the trip's organizers and president of the CCB Toronto Visionaries chapter. Ian explained that they do lots of activities within the city to encourage social engagement, but these types of trips offer a unique opportunity. For a lot of people, getting outside the city is a big adventure. Um, it's a chance to do something wildly outside their normal day-to-day -day activities. And, um, and for a lot of people, it's just a, a great opportunity to get out and have some fun with friends. The chapter takes one bus trip per year, and the decision to head to Stratford was an easy one for the group. Well, the Stratford Festival is a cultural icon in Canada. It's, um, it's some of the best theatre that we produce as a country, and we wanted to be able to participate in that. We wanted to be able to take part in it. The festival's administrative director, Shelley Stevens, was also on hand during the Touch Tour. According to Shelley, inspiration for the Touch Tour came from another area of the arts community. So we have been doing audio description, but we hadn't up until now offered touch tours. Uh, and we were inspired certainly by a lot of museums have touch tours. So you can go into a museum, you can touch some replicas of artifacts. And uh, we thought that would be inspiring to do for theater as well. So we ran two pilots earlier in the season and it was so successful that we're now going to uh, roll out a, a touch tour before every audio described performance next year. The touch tour for HMS Pinafore included rifles, a sailor's uniform, women's dresses, wigs, facial hair, and even a few hats, one of which Ian got to try on. It doesn't fit on your head that way. Sets, costumes, props are really what make the action of the play make sense. All of those things are usually only accessible visually, but with a touch tour, we have the opportunity to get up close to actually feel the objects, feel the fabrics, feel the complexity of the, of the costumes, and build a picture in our heads so that when we sit down in front of the production, we have all that information at, our, at hand. The touch tour can help create a picture in the blind and low vision audience's mind, but it's live audio describers like Sarah Menel who do the heavy lifting when the play is on. So while the group was getting their headsets for the show, I popped into Sarah's booth to get a better understanding for what she does. Josephine strides to a central bouquet of flowers and selects a rose. Rafe steps out from beneath the balcony and turns to face Josephine. The hardest thing is, is, is economy, so just having enough time to fit in some of the descriptions and trying not to step on any of the dialogue because I don't want to take away from the performance for those that are visually impaired. I want to enhance it. Um, so that can often be tricky. And sometimes the actors don't always stick to their scripts. So it's an improvising game as well. After talking to Sarah, it was time for the show to begin. And with HMS Pinafore being a comedic musical, you know the Toronto Visionaries were in for a treat. 
When I was a lad, I served a term as office boy to an attorney's firm. I cleaned the windows and I swept the floor and I polished up the handle of the big front door. The big front door. Following the show, I caught up with Iona and Ian by the bus to get their thoughts on the performance. The music was just glorious. I loved it. I loved it. It was wonderful to have the description because I can't see some of the things that they were doing and people were laughing at. So I heard it. So it was described to me and it was great. And the person who did the description was great. She did a perfect job. I think it was just the facility with which Sarah managed to um, fit really, really accurate and timely descriptions of what the action was on the stage in between all of the singing. I mean, the operetta is just packed with songs, but she managed to find those brief little moments in between where uh, she could describe an action or position characters on the stage, and it was fantastic. It really, really helped. That sounds like it was a lot of fun. It really was. The Stratford Festival is North America's largest classical theatre company, and it's amazing that they are continuing to push for accessibility because where they lead, others will follow. Absolutely. And we should note that the festival offers Braille House programs that can be borrowed from the house managers, and they also offer programs for download to be used with Braille note takers. And if you at home want to learn more about all the accessibility initiatives offered by the festival, visit stratfordfestival.ca.